where do you put your money when everything else implodes? To me, it's in the safety of gold and silver, which have been wealth for 5,000 years. We even saw recently the German foreign minister has called for a new EU-based payment system independent of the U.S. SWIFT that would not involve dollar payments, but it follows a similar pattern to what we've been talking about. Look, the first part of the premise, Dunnigan, is that the Federal Reserve is not getting tough on inflation, no matter what they continue to tell us. And, you know, we talked last week about how the National Economic Bureau or the National Bureau of Economic Research came out and said that by calculating the 13.6% inflation in 1980, Using today's numbers, it would be 9.1%. So the exact same 9% tick that we have, if calculated the way they used to be, would be at 13%. And as we talked about, Volcker raised rates to, to the federal funds rate to 19 and three quarters percent to shut down inflation. That's getting tough on inflation. If we realize that we're almost in the exact same zone for inflation, the Fed raising the federal funds rate to one and a half percent is not getting tough on inflation. And even if they raise it by another 75 or 100 basis points, which will really stick a needle right in the eye of the market, that's still not getting tough on inflation. Because even at that point, if we moved it up to two and a half or even three percent on the federal funds rate, you're still a negative six plus percent real terms uh, in terms of uh, a return. And so getting tough on inflation is not raising rates incrementally, little by little by little, while, I mean, I would argue it's even accommodative, not not tough, it's accommodative when you have uh, a negative real return. And so that incentivizes here again, more speculation until you raise the rates above inflation. Anyways, to see Saudi Arabia come out, and I believe, and I've been saying for quite some time, you know, every call I get on with customers and we get into a discussion and they want to know my take on things, the first question I ask is, what makes the dollar the world reserve currency? Do you know? Most people don't. And my answer is always, it's the protection of the Saudi kingdom as per our arrangement with Saudi Arabia since 1974 that we protect them. They denominate oil globally in dollars through OPEC. And it's that 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 fragile relationship that we have with OPEC and with Saudi Arabia that gives the dollar its hegemony, its world reserve status. To show you how fast things can switch, in early March, back when gold was 2,069 and uh, an ounce, the managed money was record long. Since then, uh, COMEX gold contracts, the, the, the managed money category um, has grown incredibly bearish and the, their, their bearish uh, betting on the COMEX gold contracts has grown by 128% over that same period. In just a few months, they've completely shifted their, their bullish to bearish sentiment. Things can change. Best laid plans become uh, need to be reevaluated from time to time. And, you know, when you talk about the, the situation that we're in, and again, one well, the byproduct of the easy money and the low interest rates has been distortions in asset prices. And so typically the safe place to be would be U.S. Treasuries. And when when people would get scared, they would run to the safety of dollars and the safety of Treasuries. But the only problem here is that that was in an interest rate environment that was gradually going down and down and down and down and down. So in this environment, if they raise rates, which is, you know, which would attract more money into uh, into treasuries, it has a negative byproduct on all of the other assets. And that's really the problem. And so uh, the interest rates may well strengthen the dollar further, but a strong dollar tends to lead, you know, of course, it's going to lead to a weaker gold price in dollar terms. But the higher rates also would suggest that inflation is continuing. And that's why rates have to rise. And and I don't think that stops anytime soon, which means the continued uh degradation of the dollar's purchasing power. And so the fact that the U.S. economy then would be obviously in a recession um, will start to eat away at the dollar. And I think when you look at where do people are going to put their money, look, rising rates may strengthen the dollar for just a little bit of time. But I think uh, this is a situation where if they raise rates too much, everything in this country collapses. So they really can't do that. So 
you know, where do you put your money? You put your money in dollars where the rates are rising just a little bit, but you're still real negatively, you're, you're receiving a still a, a negative real return. Or do you keep your money in real estate or stocks or bonds that are all inversely correlated to those rising rates? So there, there are no real safe places to put your money anymore. And, and the reason I talk about putting it in gold and silver, it's, it's two of the few assets that haven't been blown out of proportion. And the only reason they haven't been blown out of proportion, as they should have been, is that they're the canary in the mine shaft. And there's a concerted effort to mute them because rising gold and silver signals problems with the currency. And it, and it signals that, that the emperor, you know, isn't wearing any clothes. Uh, and so they're caught. They're caught between a rock and a hard place. So while they want to, to make the dollar seem more attractive by raising rates, they do. They're cutting off their nose to spite their face. And this is why I've been saying all along, regardless of what people are saying about them getting tough on inflation, they won't do it. The negative consequences are too much. But if they realize that they've milked as much out of the system as they humanly possibly can, they've incentivized certainly a good portion of the world to seek alternatives. And I think that's the dirty work that will be done for them. When this happens, where do you put your money when everything else implodes? To me, it's in the safety of gold and silver, which have been wealth for 5,000 years. And like I said last week on your show, he or she who loses least in this environment wins. Gold and silver may fall, but in that environment, everything's going to fall more. And I think it's mitigating exposure to these assets that are at all time highs that are inversely correlated to a rise in rates. People haven't realized that yet because they think the Fed is going to engineer a soft landing like they always have. The betting money says that when things get real tough, they're even talking about a 100 basis point rise. Well, maybe they want to rattle the market so much that they come back in and ease and reaccommodate. And that's what the betting money is thinking. Once they do that, they've lost credibility altogether. And in this environment where there really is no easy answer, to me, the only answer is to mitigate exposure to dollar and dollar based assets. That's why I talk about gold and silver. It's not to get wealthy. The worst part about all of this is that they've done a very good job at muting the prices. And so people say, well, geez, if it hasn't gone up in this high inflationary, low interest rate environment, when will it? That's exactly what they want us to think. This is exactly what the trial that's going on right now with the JP Morgan traders, the RICO charges that, that, that they came out and they're saying, look, this was learned from Bear Stearns. The traders came over from Bear Stearns, taught JP Morgan traders how to do it. The, 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 their supervisors knew all about it and they have been suppressing the price of gold and silver for a very long time. These are the exact same things that Bart Shilton talked about. The bottom line is, is that for whatever reason, the regulators more or less have turned a blind eye to the manipulation of the market. They've, they picked a few scapegoats. Three traders are, are being hung out to dry right now. JP Morgan traders that are facing, you know, these, these RICO allegations for manipulating the market. But they're basically saying all of their, our superiors knew about it. So this is something that is not coincidental. And as a result of the manipulation over the last decade plus, no one in this country understands the importance of holding precious metals. They've been misdirected, as we've talked about before, by price because rising gold and silver is the canary in the gold mine. And they do not want people realizing that the dollar really is a house of cards. So where do you go? You go to metals. But who knows that? This is why Rick always talks about one half of one percent allocation. It's invisible to the mainstream until it's not. And by the time it's not, then my thesis comes into play that by the time the the public at large realizes it, there's nothing left. And it happens like that because it's so hard to get product now when just our group of hard money understanding people are trying to get it. What happens when everyone wants all at once? And this is when I talk about the market being defined by no product. I'm not talking today or tomorrow or next week. I'm talking when that flip, when that switch is flipped. When that switch is flipped and you look around and there's nowhere else to put it but gold and silver, you got 24 hours and you're out of luck.